Welcome to Shading a Sphere. Hi, welcome to Shading a Sphere. So today we're going to take a look at core shadows, middle values, reflected light, cast shadow, and of course the highlight right at the top there. Now before we start, I want to show you that there's, that there's actually such thing as a cast shadow, the core shadow, the highlight, there's also some middle values there, and of course we got some reflected light going right here. And the reflected light, let's just, I'm going to try to show you that it's real, look at, if I grab this piece of paper, it actually brightens the reflected light. So here it is again. And again, you can definitely see it gets brighter with the reflected, reflected light of the paper. Now here are some materials. You can use blending tools, which are optional. There's blending stumps, cotton swabs, tissue paper. I mean, whatever you want to use to blend out, just don't use your finger. Because your finger's got those oils in them. Uh, and then you can use erasers too, if you need them. I like using kneaded erasers or just something with a larger, flatter surface so that way it's not the pointed ones at the end of a regular pencil. And you can also form the kneaded erasers too. Don't use mechanical pencils for this. Use either wooden ones or if you have some fancy drawing pencils, you can use those. I'm using woodless graphite pencils and I'm going to be using the HB one all the way up until the very end when I indicate that I'm using a 6B. So we're going to start out by drawing a circle, and just like with any other drawing, you always want to keep your lines light to start off with. I'm using my entire arm to, to move my pencil, so I'm not trying to bend my wrist or my elbow, I'm trying to use my whole entire shoulder to try to get my circle as circle-y as I can get it to be. And right here I'm adding an ellipse for a cast shadow. Um, but if you're struggling with drawing a circle, you can always use a cup or another circular object to trace around. And, of course, with this, too, you want to use light lines. You want to outline it very lightly. If you have a dark outline, it's going to ruin the whole look of your sphere. Whenever I shade spheres, I like to start with the core shadow. This is the darkest area of the circle. I like to use the side of my pencil and I like to keep, my, keep the motions pretty consistent using small circular motions. Try playing around with the grip of your pencil too if you wanna I don't know, just try new techniques and new grips with it because you never know which way you're going to end up liking the most. And then also make sure not to go too hard with um, the pressure because you don't want to damage the paper. If you use too much pressure, you could damage the paper and it might get this graphite shine. Or if you start to notice that the paper is warping, that means you're going too hard on the paper. So this is this is about as dark as I can go with the HB pencil. So now I'm going to start to lighten up my pressure on it and get in those middle values and the reflected light on the bottom. I'm still using all the same techniques, just a lighter amount of pressure. So the pencil is to the side and I'm still using circular motions throughout the whole entire thing. And I'm slowly building up the middle values because if I go too dark too fast, then I have to erase and I'd rather not erase because then it kind of ruins the flow of the graphite. And you want to put a light value on top of the circle as well. The only area that th that is the white of the paper is the highlight. And then now I'm darkening the middle values and creating a smoother gradation across from um, 
the core shadow to the to the highlight. Now I'm adding an ellipse for the cast shadow, and it doesn't really have to be perfect, the, the ellipse. Just have some type of indication that there's a shadow there. What you do not want to do is you do not want to trace another circle for the cast shadow, because the cast shadow is not a circle, it's an ellipse, it's like an oval. And then the cast shadow is darkest right underneath the sphere. So the darkest point for the ellipse is going to be directly under the sphere. And now I'm using an eraser to clean up a few of the areas. So far I haven't used any blending tools at all. And I have a pretty decent sphere without using my blending tools, but I'll go ahead and try out the blending stuff now. And I'm going to use the one that has a larger surface area. I'm using the side of the blending stump and circular motions. Do not ever use the blending stumps vertically, straight up and down. So many students do that and it ruins it. And also be aware that when using a blending stump, it will darken your values, and the darker the stump, the more value you're going to be adding on to the areas that you're blending out. So that's why I'm switching back and forth from the darker side of the blending stump to the lighter side, because I didn't want to make the top values around the highlight too dark. If you want a sphere that's even more three-dimensional, you can switch your your pencil to anything that has the B, because the B will be darker than the HB. So right here I'm using a 6B, and darker values can create more contrast, more dimension, and just really make your overall drawing just pop a lot more. It'll make it stand out more. I'm also darkening the value on the cast shadow as well, especially directly underneath the sphere, because that's going to be the darkest area of the shadow. I'm going back in there with the blending stump as well to smooth out any areas to, to have a nice, smoother gradation across. Also, I'm revisiting the reflected light because it was too light in value, so now I'm just kind of blending out some of that and giving it to the reflected light to give it more of like a middle tone, a middle value. If you need to lighten up anything, you can use an eraser and try to have like a very large flat surface area and lightly tap it, slide over the areas that you want to that you want to erase. And you can see that the eraser is picking up the graphite. And then if you need to, you can smooth over any areas that you need to with a blending stump or any blending tool. The last step is to label your sphere. So you want to label the highlight, which is the circle that's the white of the paper, the middle values, which is everything that's between the core shadow and the highlight. And then you also want to label reflected light and a cast shadow at the very end. So that's it. That's how you, or that's how I shade a sphere at least. I think it, it's an effective way to do it. So maybe you'll figure out different techniques along the way that you can use that maybe I didn't even mention in the video. And that's the beauty of art is that there's not one way to do it. There's multiple ways. All right, that's it. Good night.